Hello out there to all you producers and musicians and just overall music enthusiasts of any kind. When it comes to music in general, there's a whole lot of silly little words and terms that you'll hear from time to time. And I'm sure most beginner musicians or even just casual music listeners probably don't know a lot of these terms. But I've also noticed that even a lot of experienced musicians aren't really familiar with some of these terms. So today in this video, we're going to be going over 50 musical terms that I think every musician or just music enthusiast in general should know about. So the plan here is that these terms are going to start off very simple and then just get a little bit more advanced, a little bit more nuanced as the video goes on. The first pretty basic one you should know about is tempo. Tempo is literally just the speed of any piece of music. It's measured in beats per minute, the same way your heart rate is measured. Every piece of music also has a time signature. So I'm sure you've probably heard of 4-4 four, four time or 3-4 time or something like that. And those aren't just random numbers. Basically, the top number is how many beats are in a bar and the bottom number is what type of note are those beats actually playing. So if you turn on literally any popular song right now, you'll probably hear something like one two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So obviously that's where the four comes from. If we were doing three, four, it would be more like one, two, three, one, two, three. There's tons of different time signatures and combinations of time signatures, but four, four is the most common. Another thing you should probably know about is something called decibels, which is the standard unit of measurement for volume of anything actually. Basically every piece of music that ever gets uploaded to streaming services is always under zero decibels. But that's just in whatever program that that song was made in because real life decibels are very different. Like you just having a conversation with somebody in real life is probably like 50 to 60 decibels, which in comparison seems super loud. Volume and decibels gets kind of complicated. Don't worry about that one too much. <laughs> but now I'm going to confuse you even more. LUFS loudness units full scale is basically another way to measure volume and specifically in relation to streaming services and like broadcast TV and all that kind of stuff media related things the whole luffs thing actually has to do with the relation of your track overall to how close it is to zero decibels just know that that's kind of the way that Spotify and Apple music and stuff like that measure volume speaking of volume volume obviously refers to just how loud something is or isn't but a lot of people don't know that there's actually a difference between volume and velocity when it comes to music. You can kind of think of velocity as how hard or soft you're playing a specific note in music. For example, I can play this note on the guitar with a low velocity and a high velocity. It doesn't just change the volume, it also changes the way that the note sounds, actually the EQ a little bit as well, and a bunch of other things. So now an essential when it comes to making music in the modern era is a digital audio workstation or DAW as a lot of people will call it. I think digital audio workstation is a pretty self-explanatory name, but it's basically just any program where you can make music and mess around with audio and sounds and stuff like that. Pretty much any song that you hear these days probably had a DAW involved in some part of the process. And one very crucial part of making music in any digital audio workstation is your plugins. And what are plugins exactly? There's kind of two types of plugins. One is effects plugins and the other one are VS ST plugins. Effects plugins basically just take in audio and take in sound and they add different stuff onto them like reverb or maybe they compress the volume or maybe they add delay and stuff like that. If you want a full video on that, but VST plugins are a little bit different. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology, and VSTs basically take an input from a MIDI controller and turn it into some sort of sound. When you're messing around with plugins and presets and stuff like that, you might also come across something that says init. That pretty much just means initialize, and it pretty much just returns whatever plugin you're using to the default preset or setting or whatever. So now moving into the more musical side of things, one thing you should know about is frequency. Frequency is actually a little bit of a crazy science thing, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. Pretty much any sound that you ever hear is on a frequency frequency range from low to high. So if I go, Ooh, that's a low frequency. And if I go, Ooh, that's a high frequency. When any sound is produced, it's basically just like a wiggly line. And the faster that wiggly line moves, the higher in pitch and the slower that wiggly line moves, the lower in pitch. And frequency is basically just a measure of that. So once you start dealing with actually playing notes and doing musical stuff, you're kind of going to have two ways that a collection of notes are categorized. The first one is a melody. A melody is basically just a sequence of a few notes played in a row. An example of a melody would be something like this. And the second way is harmony, which harmony is instead of playing those notes in a row, you play them all at the same time. An example of a harmony would be something like this. But there's also a little thing called an arpeggio. If you started out making music in a DAW and using plugins and stuff like that, you've probably seen presets and stuff like that that say ARP. That's just short for arpeggio. And it's basically just taking any chord, any harmony, and instead of playing it all at once, you play out each note individually. So where I could play this chord like this, an arpeggio would be more like this. 
when you're playing music, the notes and the melodies that are in the lower region, in the lower frequency range, you generally refer to that stuff as the bass frequencies, the bass range, and then the higher frequency stuff is sometimes referred to as the treble range. Scales versus keys. Yes, there is a difference. A scale is basically just any series of notes that you play together, like in a row, and a key is basically when you stick to those specific notes when you're actually playing a song. When you're playing a piece of music, you wouldn't say, I'm playing in the scale of C major. You would say, I'm playing in the key of C major. So you can kind of think about it like scale is the actual physical thing that you play, and the key is just like the guideline, the overall idea for the notes that you use for the song, if that makes sense. But how do people even decide what notes to play together? How do they even come up with these scales and keys that I'm talking about? Well, that has to do with intervals. An interval is basically just the relation between two specific notes. Just know that every note has a specific relation to the other notes, and they actually are called specific things, like major third and perfect fifth and minor second and stuff like that. All that fancy mumbo jumbo is just used to describe how far away specific notes are to each other. So you might have also heard tell of the words flat and sharp. Flats and sharps are basically the black notes on a piano or keyboard. And when it comes to creating scales and playing in keys and stuff like that, if a note is a little bit lower than one of the notes that is in the scale, people will say that that note is flat. If a note is a little bit higher than the one that's in the scale, people will say that note is a little bit sharp. So if we look at a keyboard and we go to G sharp, that G sharp is actually also an A flat. So the note on the keyboard basically has two names. Super weird, I know. How do you know what to call it? It just depends on what key you're playing in at a specific time. Don't worry about it, not a big deal. If a specific note is flat or sharp and it goes out of the key you're playing in, that would be called a chromatic note. A chromatic note is just any note that isn't in the scale or key that you're working in. Cadence, what the heck is that? Well, it actually means two things. The first thing that you'll probably hear it used for a little bit more frequently is just the overall rhythmic flow and delivery of somebody's voice on a track. But actually cadence also refers to how you end a specific chord progression. Depending on what chords you choose and how you resolve a chord progression, they'll have different names and classifications for it. And that's called the cadence. When it comes to making music, you might've heard of sampling before. Sampling is basically when you take an audio portion from another song that already exists, take that bad boy and put it in your own song and you know do something different with it, put some drums over it, whatever the heck you want to do. It's basically just when you take audio from somewhere else and use it in your track. But what is interpolating? Interpolating. Inter however you want to pronounce it, interpolating is basically when you say lyrics from a song that already exists. You can kind of think of it as like quoting another song. But that's not all. You can also do this in a musical sense as well. There's this little known song that came out a few years back. It's pretty underground. You probably haven't heard it before. It's called Lucid Dreams by Juice World. Probably never heard of it. And a lot of people think that the producer of the song, Nick Mira, actually sampled another song called The Shape of My Heart by Sting. However, he didn't actually sample it. He just listened out for the notes in the melody, copied the notes down in a plugin in his DAW and that was what he used. So he didn't actually sample because he didn't take the audio directly, but he interpolated by copying the notes. Overdubbing. What's that all about? An overdub is basically when you have a track and you just record something individually over it. So whereas a normal band would just play everything live and everything they play on the spot would get recorded, overdubbing something would be like, okay, I'm gonna record drums and then I'm gonna overdub guitar on top of it. So yeah, it's basically just playing something over something you already have pretty much. But when you're recording pretty much anything, one thing you might want to be concerned with is a little thing called latency. Latency is basically the delay between when you make a sound or create a sound and it goes in through the microphone or cables and into your computer and into your program that you're using and onto your screen in front of you on the computer. The time that it takes to go through that process is latency. Kind of easy to remember because you just think of like late as in how late is the <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It makes sense in my head. There's a lot of different things involved with latency, like what cables you're using, how powerful your computer is. The less latency you have, the easier it will be for you to record stuff because it'll be more accurately timed. But if you have more latency, it's actually a little bit easier on your computer to handle all the, you know, inputs and data and I don't know, whatever, whatever computers do. Comping. So you might have heard of vocal comping before, but you can literally comp anything that you record. Comping is basically when you record something like a bunch of times, and then you just pick the best parts of each recording and smush them all into one. Another part of the music making process is a little thing called leveling. Super easy one to understand. Leveling is literally just adjusting the volumes of every different sound in your track so that they all fit well together. Nothing's too loud or nothing's too quiet. Let's talk a little bit about instruments. This is commonly known as a guitar. When you're playing guitar, each of these strings produce a specific note. And to make sure that everybody's kind of 
not on the same page with the notes that these actually play, there's a little thing called standard tuning. Standard tuning on the strings from top to bottom is E, A, D, G, B, E. On a bass guitar, it's the same thing, except for the bottom two are cut off because there's only four strings. But speaking of strings, there are actually different types of strings. There's two main types, but actually three types, round wounds, flat wounds, and tape wounds. See those lines on there? Those are round wound strings. It's basically just like a string with metal wrapped around it, a bunch. As you can imagine, the flat wound strings don't have the ridges, the bumps on them. They're just flat all the way up and down. All right, now what the heck is muting? This right here, this is muting. This is also muting. That's also muting. Muting is basically the variety of different ways that you can dampen specific instruments in specific ways to change the sound and get less vibration out of an instrument so you have a little bit more dull and flatter kind of sound. If you own an audio interface, one of these, You've probably heard of something called phantom power, or it might show up as 48V, 48 volts, something like that. Some microphones actually need extra power to be able to function and be able to record your voice and stuff. Usually that's for condenser microphones. If your microphone does need phantom power, make sure that you turn the phantom power off before unplugging it because it can actually kind of damage the microphone by just yanking the cord out while phantom power is on. Speaking of microphones and recording and things of that nature, you might have heard people describe recordings as being muddy or boxy or tinny or things like that. But what does this actually technically mean when people say this? Even though it's kind of subjective what people might think is muddy or boxy or whatever, generally this refers to a song or a recording that has a lot of low mid frequencies. Having an abundance of those frequencies can kind of create this muddy, boxy, gross kind of sound. Warmth. Another one of those silly little words you've probably heard people say a hundred times. When people say, we need to add some more warmth to this track, a lot of times they're referring to adding some sort of saturation plugin to the song or track that you're working on. I actually explain this in a lot greater detail in the video where I explain all the effects plugins that I mentioned earlier. But when you add a saturation plugin, it actually adds a little bit of distortion and that kind of gives your track that warmth and color that people talk about. Lo-fi, and not lo-fi hip hop beats to chill and study to that you might be familiar with. Lo-fi actually just means low fidelity and most people use this to describe a recording that sounds like it's kind of lower quality, not like a super highly produced and professionally mixed and mastered kind of track. When you think of lo-fi, think of more like a demo home recording type feel. For the next couple terms here, we're going to head over to the drum set drum set over there. This right here is, you guessed it, a drum kit. So remember earlier when I was talking about the whole time signature thing, the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Obviously that's going to have a big role when you're playing drums because it's all rhythm. If we take that one, two, three, four, and divide the time between each of those in two, we'll have something like one and two and three and four and. I'm sure you've maybe heard music counted like that before with the ands in between the numbers. And if you play on the numbers and the ands, those are eighth notes. So on the hi-hat, it'll sound something like this. but we can also divide that once more into 16th notes, which will then be counted like 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a. And obviously if we play that, we're playing a lot more notes here. But let's just go back to eighth notes for right now. One and two and three and four and. Usually when you play on the numbers, the one, two, three, four, that's gonna be called the downbeat. And the and is a lot of times referred to as the upbeat. So then there's also a little thing called swing. Swing basically refers to how far off from that one, two, three, four, you're actually playing the drums. So a pattern with some more swing on it would probably sound something like this. Instead of just going, t -t 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 -t, I'm going, t -t 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 -t. another term that's not super common, but you might hear from time to time is called syncopation. So normally within a given piece of music, you've got strong beats and you've got weak beats. The strong beats are going to be on the one and the three. So one, two, three, four. Syncopation is basically accenting the weak beats instead of the strong beats. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, and actually sometimes not even playing on the one. So you start the song on two instead of starting it on one, which can be very confusing. And it makes people think a lot of times that that is the one, but it's actually not. Another important thing to know about in the modern music making world is file types. I'm not going to go into every single file type because there's a bazillion of them, but you should know what a lossless versus not lossless file type is. For sound specifically, the two most common ones are MP3 and WAV. WAV is a lossless file type and MP3 is a lossful 
file type. I'm pretty sure the way this works is that MP3s are stored as compressed files, and then when you open them, they get uncompressed and then they get recompressed. So when this happens, they lose a little bit of data and it gets a little bit lower quality. This is not a huge deal. Most of the time, people aren't going to be able to tell the difference between a WAV and MP3. But let's say you were to open and close an MP3 file, like say 500,000 times, by the 500,000th time, you'd probably notice a pretty big quality difference. You've also probably heard people talk about stems before, and not in the context of plants, but rather in the context of music. Stems, or track outs as they're sometimes called, are basically just every sound in your beat, but exported individually. So if your song has drums, and a guitar, and a bass, and piano, when you export the stems, you'll get the drums, the guitar, the piano, the bass, all in their own individual files, which is really nice if you're collaborating with other people, or if you're sending your tracks to like an engineer or somebody who needs to mix it. Speaking of which, you might have heard of the term executive producing before, but I guarantee a good portion of you have absolutely no idea what that means. An executive producer pretty much takes a song or album that's basically already finished, and they go in and rearrange certain elements, they move the layout of the beat around, they also a lot of times will adjust the track list, like what tracks fit in certain areas on the album, they also will have certain inputs on the mixing, and like how the tracks are put together, and stuff like that. They're kind of just the person who oversees like the whole layout and vision of a specific song or album. You've probably also heard of royalties. Not sure why they call it that, but it's literally just the amount of money that you make from a song. There are different types of royalties. I think there's like four different types. There's like mechanical royalties, performance royalties, other stuff like that. But as a producer or performer or a songwriter, whatever, you'll receive a specific percentage of what a song makes. And that percentage is called your royalty points. They could just call it percentage, but they call it royalty points. All right, this one's not really a musical term, but it's something that I think everybody should understand. So whenever a big artist releases an album, you've probably heard something like, like, they sold 100,000 in the first week. Traditionally, that would mean that they actually sold 100,000 albums, but now in the modern era, it's a little bit more complicated because there's different things that factor into that number. The first one will be still the actual album sales, so if Post Malone releases an album and I go to Walmart and I buy it off the shelves, that's one album sale for him. But now with streaming and everything, there's actually a way that they calculate how many streams equal an album sale. The general number is like 1,500 streams equal equals one album sale. But see, this also gets a little bit controversial these days because what a lot of people will do is they'll sell merchandise. And then with every piece of merchandise that you purchase, you'll also get a copy of the album, whether it's digitally or physically, and that will count as an album sale. So big artists are essentially just roping in whatever merch sales they also get into their album sales. So it's definitely an interesting topic, but it's something that you should know about, I think. And then honestly, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about here is the two major types of playlists that are on Spotify. So the first one is editorial playlists and these playlists are actually curated by like a real human being who goes through and finds songs and picks you know popular songs or songs that are getting popular or they just heard and they liked whatever the case may be but then there's also Spotify algorithmic playlists which literally are like algorithm computer generated where basically Spotify's algorithm picks songs and adds them to a playlist that way but yeah so now at this point I think we've covered all 50 terms pretty crazy. Took a while. I hope this video helped you out at least a little bit. I hope you're able to learn something new here. Let me know if you guys maybe want me to do another one of these, if you want me to go more in-depth in specific topics. But yeah, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this one here today. Make sure you guys go check out my Instagram, SoundCloud, all that other social media stuff in the description below if you'd like to do so, and I will see you guys next time.